Hey guys, how's it going? Masterbucks here and welcome to my FIFA 19 Wolverhampton Wanderers career mode. We've wrapped up the Juventus career mode. That was a little one season career mode, a little teaser to FIFA 19 career mode, but this is the main career mode I'm starting FIFA 19 with. I let you guys vote this year as to what team you wanted me to do because I had two options that I just could not pick from myself. I'd been trying to pick between the two for ages. You have no idea for so, so long. And finally, I just said, stuff it, put the word out there. You guys said Wolves. If you're disappointed I'm not doing a Tottenham Hotspur career mode, then don't worry because I'm almost certainly going to be doing one later on in the future. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at this Wolves team. It's, of course, a five at the back formation, a 5-2-3 formation, which I'll be honest, I'm probably going to stick with to start this career mode, and I probably won't stick with it for the entirety of it. I'll eventually probably move to maybe a 4-3-3, where I maybe integrate a, a center defensive mid or a center attack and midfielder. I'm trying to to keep things nice and tight at the back, considering that, of course, as you can tell from the title and from the thumbnail, it is the ultimate career mode. That essentially means that every single game that we play of this entire career mode will be on ultimate difficulty. Thankfully, there's not too big a difference between legendary and ultimate, but it's still going to be a challenge nonetheless. But anyway, let's look at the starting 11. Rui Patricio in goal, 83 overall, 30 years of age, so I would assume maybe he'll start dropping off in a season or two. I'm not sure, but I think he should do just fine for us for the start of this career mode, and he'll probably stay in goal for a while. We've got Johnny, the left wing back. Of course, this formation has wing backs. I'm probably going to keep him there for now. Bolly is a center back along with Captain Cody, and then Dendonka, who I swore was like a CDM or a center mid. It turns out he can play in both those positions, but I almost feel bad playing him at center back at center back because I feel like his his talents are wasted there, but it's nice to have a player that can play both center back and center mid, so I could throw him in the midfield if I need to, and I'll probably end up integrating him into the midfield later on. And then we've got Doherty, probably one of the first players I'm going to look to maybe replace. I definitely want to bring in another right wing back or right back if possible to replace him because he's 26 years of age, 74 rated, and can't exactly see him getting much higher than that. The midfield looks pretty exciting and pretty damn tidy, if you don't mind me saying so. It's Joe, or should I say, Jao Ma, uh, Martinho, 31 years of age, is going to start dropping off. It is inevitable, but super well-rounded and one of the better well-rounded players in the game. And then Ruben Neves, a bloke with a super high potential. You know, he's got some stats about him. He's absolute quality, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how he's going to progress over the course of this career mode. And the front three now... This is not the starting front three that was uh, at the beginning or the default front three. We have Diego Jota, who is, again, another high potential player and another incredible get. Look at that for the mental and physical and then skill attributes, nice ball control and dribbling, which is always great for a fullback, the finishing, maybe think certain things that could get worked on. Him and, or should I say, uh, Adama at right wing. And he's actually going to be a player that I put into the starting 11. He's not in the default starting 11. I put him in there in place of, uh, oh, sheesh, I've forgotten his name. We'll get to him when we get to the benches and the reserves. But you can see he doesn't have an awful lot of great skill attributes. He's got great ball control and dribbling, and that's it. Pace, good ball control and dribbling, not much else apart from that. There are players like that, and I, I don't really typically like players like that, but I'm going to be giving him drills, and hopefully we can develop him into a more well-rounded footballer. And then at striker, we've got Raul Jimenez, who I believe should probably do an okay job. It just looks like a an okay, decent striker for me in the game with a decent amount of pace, decent technical stats, good finishing and things like that. Six foot two, so some height about him and nice high attacking and defensive work rates. We'll see how that goes for us. But a nice starting 11, I think, to get things kicked off. The bench looks like this. Rudy in goal. We've got Iorfa and Vinag uh, Vinagre, who I believe this bloke's actually got very good potential as well. So despite being a low overall, I'll probably give him drills and keep him in the in the on the bench anyway. We've got Saiz there. We've got... Ronan, 65 overall. He is my next best center mid. So I'm probably going to have to look to increase the depth in my midfield. We've got Cavalero, or Cavalero who is a Ivan Cavalero. He can play at right wing, left wing, and striker, which is great. So if I need him to play at either of the front three positions, he can do that. Good weak foot as well. So I, f I trust him on either side. And then there's also Hel de Costa. That is the man that I ended up dispossessing or uh, taking out of the starting 11. But there's a very good chance I might get sick of Adama. And it's not like he doesn't have pace about him either. And he is slightly more well-rounded. But I just, I want to give Adama a chance first. If he pisses me off, if he's no good, then we'll throw Costa in there. And really, over the course of the career mode, it's about who progresses further, who grows higher in their overall. And then the reserves, only one other goalkeeper here, Norris. We've got plenty of centre-backs to choose from. House is actually a pretty high-potential player and a couple of 
uh, older Deadwood players that we'll probably look to get rid of. A lot of right mid and left midfielders, despite the fact we're going to be playing left wing and right wing formations, I'll still maybe keep them around if they're of use. And a few other pretty low overall players. Batani is my backup striker, actual striker at 73, although I'm not sure how high he could get, as well as a few others as well. So I'm definitely going to have to look to increase the depth in this team a little bit more, which is fine. I'm probably not going to go in and make any massive starting 11 signings in the 80s, mid 80s or anything like that to get things started. Probably make some 70, mid 70, high 70 rated players that have decent potentials. And to show you what I'm talking about, this is the short list of players that I've put together so far. You'll notice not a lot of high rated players like players in the 80s. There's a couple in there for sure, but um, a lot of these are younger players with good potentials that I'll look to buy over the course of the career mode. Not all at once per se, but still, we got a few goalkeepers in there. Plenty of right wing backs like Maffeo and Aguilar, who I'm actually looking at. Kyle Walker-Peters as well, maybe. Can play both right wing, uh, right back and left back. So I'd love for him to maybe be on the bench or something. I just love a player that can play on both right back and left back as uh, as another option. So maybe him. We've got this bloke as centre back here, Muki, uh, Mukile, who's actually a centre back, but can play at right back and right wing back. I would probably look to sign him straight away, and I probably will do so a little later on, to play at right wing back and not centre back. If we need him to play at centre back, then we can, but I'd actually look to play him at the right wing back position. Plenty of other centre back options as well. Some of these higher rated than others, and some are definitely biased for the future. Again, we do have the odd player like Adrian Rabot, who's 83 rated in the last year of his contract as well. So maybe a potential pre-contract signing. Again, more young players like Puig and, Ag uh, and Adley. We've got Loftus Cheek in there, Enkidu, Golovin. Costa, plenty of center mid, center attacker mid options as well, because you know me, if you've been watching these career modes for a while, I love playing a center, with a center attacking midfielder. They always thrive under me. Got a couple of other nice striking options, all very, very young as well that I might look at. Uh, Sturridge is another player in the last year of his contract. Maybe we could bring him in. He could be of use. And then a few left wing, back, uh, left wing options as well. Martial at 83. This is the one I'm tossing up at the moment. Would it be a little too far-fetched to go and get Martial on a pre-contract signing? I know that he is really struggling at the moment with Manchester United. It's just not really working out for him there. Could he maybe have a career at Wolves? I don't know. We'll see how the uh, pr uh, how the season progresses for us. But I'm not going to make any signings just yet. We'll advance forward ahead and get the information on all the players in that short list. We'll take a look at the budget that we're working with. Uh, I tell you what, boys. Wolves have an incredible amount of cash, and then you just chuck on the 60% that you get at the beginning of the career mode. A little over 100 million worth of a transfer budget. We have got tons of cash. I'm not gonna blow it all in this first season, though. I'm actually gonna probably look to spend this elsewhere because I definitely want to buy myself some top tier scouts because in the short time I've been playing career mode over at, say, the capture event in Berlin about a week or two ago, the Youth Academy was just overpowered as hell. And I was working with scouts that were only two-star, three-star judgment and experience. And they were coming up with wonder kids on the regular. So I think Youth Academy this year could really set you up quite well. So we are going to go in big and spend basically the most amount that we can on each single scout. So we've got a scout here that's worth 3.7 mil. Neil McGuinness from uh, Ireland. What an Irish name as well. It's absolutely perfect. Hopefully we come up with an English scout. Maybe. No, we end up getting... A Russian here in Emil Artamanov, whatever, still. We'll get him in as well. And then hopefully we come up with an English scout. Come on, please. Uh, we have Elliot Wilson, but he's just, uh, I don't know. We've got another, we've got two to choose from. Alberto Conti or a Croatian in Ballas. Uh, who do we want? Who do we want to go for? I'll tell you what, we'll go with the Italian. We'll play it safe. Alberto Conti. Now, as much as I like actually sending scouts to their actual nations that they're from, because for some whatever reason, you feel like they'd have better success rate. I'm starting to really notice and talking with a lot of people that it's kind of, if there is a little bonus, it's not that big. So, you know, what? we're an English club. We need to find English, ta uh, English talent. So I'm going to send my best scout away to England. And I mean, he is from Ireland, but still, that should be fine. Whatever. So for nine months, we'll send him away. As for our Russian scout, Emil, I'm probably not going to send him to Russia, but we'll send him to the home of the current world champions in France. I mean, if you flip the colors around and, you know, rotate at 90 degrees then I mean you've basically got a French you've basically got a French flag anyway with the Russians don't you so yeah we'll send nine months away to Russia and for Alberto Conti now if I send him away to Italy that wouldn't be too bad but I think I'm actually going to send him away to and I think you're all pretty confident what bloody nation I'm going to send him away to come on it's Wolves we've got to we've got to do it we have to try to grow poor uh, we have to try to grow Portuguese football as much as we can Forget the fact that we're an English club. No, we are a Portuguese club. We are through and through, I swear. So Alberto Conti, despite the fact that he's Italian, 
Hopefully he comes up with some Portuguese legends for us. So those scouting networks are set up. We will get updates on the first of every single month for the next nine months. And I will, I am looking forward to seeing if we can uncover a couple of gems. I'm also going to start going through now and adding certain players to the loan list. Players that aren't exactly going to play much, but I still want to get a bit of growth into. And just as a rule of thumb as well, if I come across a player that is like, let's say, below 70 and like 22, 23 or older, just consider them on the on the transfer list because they're probably not going to get anywhere. Like Ronan, he's probably fine to get on the loan list, but how about this bloke? Joe Mason, 66. I, I, I can't see a much of a future for him. He's probably a player that needs to move on. Premier League maybe is a bit too high. Will Norris can get on the transfer list as well. Paul Gladon can probably get on the transfer list. Ebanks, Landell, 25 years of age, 66. I know he doesn't have a great potential. I know this lad does have a very good potential, so he can... And he's actually my bench player, so he can stick around as well. And we'll probably maybe end it there. So for drills, I'm going to start off with this. Adama, Neves, Dendonka, Johnny, and Carvalero are going to start off by getting five drills. And they'll get one individual each. We've got adapt attacking scenarios for Adama. Just to try to develop some of his technical stats that maybe he's a bit low on. Like, for example, finishing, short passing, attack and positioning. I really like that stat, actually, for a... Uh, a winger that's maybe got good pace and dribbling, but not much else. That's actually going to work real well for him. Race against the clock, I've given to Neves, Dendonka, and Johnny. So it's going to work on just their ability on ball, which I feel like is I, I, just a great drill for any, to give any outfield player, honestly. And then speed shooting for Cavaliero right there. So that's going to work on a lot of pretty good things, like the finishing and the long shots for a winger. Very important as well. Sprint speed, we'll, throw, we'll just chuck that in there as well. Why the hell not make that a little bit quicker too? I mean, why not? It, sprint speed's actually in a... not. I thought it was just in Race Against the Clock. Turns out it's in speed shooting as well. So, man, you can really train your pace of your players this year quite a fair bit. So, anyway, we'll simulate these five drills and mixed results. A ratings for Adama, which is good to see, and the D's, unfortunately, in a few other places. But finally, I'm going to start advancing forward in this career mode. We're going to start things off with the international preseason friendly tournament, and I'm not going to play any of the games except if I make the final. I'm also just, as a rule of thumb, going to play my second team as well, just because I'd hate to get a big term injury, a big long term injury right before the end of it. But let's skip ahead. 2 1 victory. Thank you very much. And it's a brace there for Carvalero, so all right, not too bad to see him getting on the score sheet. Again, there's plenty of wingers that are going to be fighting for spots and game time in this season. Already got a loan offer from Sal Sulo this time for Courtney House. That's an interesting one, but yes, yeah, still, we'll look at that. Since I'm not really giving this guy drills at the moment, and I know that he's got a pretty high uh, potential, I'm going to send him away. Hopefully, he'll get some significant game time at Sal Sulo, but uh, I don't know. We normally, when it comes to loan offers... You're blessed if you get them for most of the players that you list, so I'm just going to accept it. Manchester United are coming in with a big offer for Ruben Neves here, 22 million. And is that even really that big an offer? Because he's worth 21. And considering the potential this bloke's got, no, absolutely not. Ruben Neves is staying at Wolves, I reckon, for a long time. One more game to simulate. If we can get the win here against Mainz, I feel very confident that we'll be through into the knockouts. And we cop the L. Away games, no surprise. I know it's not technically an away game. We're all playing abroad, but like stuff this. It's always the away games. Uh, come on then. Let's simulate once more. We get the same drills and this time it's even worse results. But Adama is ticking along though. Another Italian club, Palmer, coming in for a Danny Bath here. And I mean, they've offered for a 27-year-old 70-rated player over his value. And I'm not going to get much more out of them for that. So I'm just going to accept that just another play that I'm, I'm liking to get off the books. We have so many center backs already. We're getting plenty of scout reports back, which is good. We'll hopefully have all the information on all the players in my shortlist. Another transfer offer for Ebanks Landell. And again, we'll probably just look to let him go as well. All right, come on. They're also playing a five at the back, but they've got their five, three, two. We've got the five, two, three, hopefully, hopefully. And we do, but we get the injury. Oh no, that's not good at all. So that means, and I'm pretty confident Cody is actually one of the players that probably would have been in my starting 11 anyway. Hopefully it's not a long one. A pulled calf muscle, he's out for seven days. All right, that's manageable. He'll still be fit for the start of the actual Premier League season, but uh, still. We got a loan offer for Gibbs White from Sivaspor, and uh, I assume that's a, what, a Turkish club maybe? I'm not saying it's impossible that English players don't eventually venture out and go to other European or, you know, other nations to play in, on loan and stuff, but like, like it... An 18-year-old Englishman, 64 overall, with a pretty good potential, and he's going to a Turkish club. I don't know. Except, done. Just do it. i got to stop complaining. And again, another transfer offer for 
Besiktas this time. And uh, they're actually offered some pretty good money here. It's a little over his value. And apparently I could get 10 mil for him. And uh, I'm not going to go too hard, but we'll delegate. And we'll, we'll counter offer for 10 mil exactly. Uh, if they can meet me halfway and we can cop an extra mil out of him, then yeah, sure, sweet. Doherty is my starting right wing back right now. But like I said, I'm going to be buying a new right wing back almost straight away. Bath has been sold. We're bringing in just that little bit of cash right now. And then straight away, another offer coming in for Phil Ofsu Aya, whatever. Again, another right back, right wing back, only worth about a mil. But again, another player that's not really got much else room to grow. So again, I'm just getting rid of all the Deadwood players. I'm not wasting any time here, am I? And <laughs> look at this. I kept my my uh, my assistant manager is a negotiating genius. You know how uh, Basikdas originally offered 7.2 million for uh, for Doherty. Well, they finally agreed on a slightly better deal of 7.2 million. So awesome, awesome negotiating skills there, my son. You're a, you're a real fucking Harvey Specter, aren't you? Unbelievable. Let's just do it. Let's sell him off. Uh, like I said, I'm bringing in plenty more players in his position. We will be covered. And how about this too, by the way? The team we're playing in the semi-final of this friendly tournament is Besiktas, the team that we are just about to sell Doherty to. Can we get past them and make the final? Yeah, we can. Neves, 87th minute. Get in there, the boys. Come on. Getting a nice tidy amount for making the final, 3.5. Considering how much we've got, it's a nice little addition, but still nothing crazy. And more transfer offers coming in for Evanks Landell, for Joe Mason, and... Like, we are literally, this is amazing. We are transfer listing players and legitimately getting offers for players that we're actually transfer. Like, it's beautiful. We're not like transfer listing a player and then having to wait two seasons for an offer to come in for him. It's amazing. And just a little bit more play training before the final. And how about that? A, B, B, A, and the little unfortunate result with the C. But that's a banging couple of training drill results right there. And we still have, I believe, Doherty in the team. We did get one email. Has he been sold? No, he hasn't. All right, so we still have our main starting 11 for the final of this game as well. Everyone's relatively fit except for Cody, so I'm probably going to have to look to replace him, although he is just coming back from injury. But aside from that, we're pretty much going to get to play with our main starting 11. Here we go then. This will be my first game of the career mode. It is again only a friendly, but it would be nice to take home a little bit, even if it is a preseason tournament trophy, a little bit of silverware to get things kicked off. And I, the main thing is I, I, I just want the win. I know that I get the title with the win, but we're playing on ultimate difficulty. I've already, I've only played one game on ultimate difficulty so far in FIFA 19 career mode. That was the Champions League final, but that was with Juventus. And I had Mo Salah, Ronaldo, and just an, an amazing team. And this, this is definitely a project. It's not like they're absolute garbage or anything. I mean, they look like it's a good side, but it's, uh, it's no Juventus. So we'll see how I can manage without a top, top team like that. But, oh, I, we're about to find out if this was a horrible challenge for me to start FIFA 19 with and if I have just jumped in way too deep, way too early. We are playing this pre-season friendly tournament final in the Signal Iduna Park 2. So a brand new awesome stadium that was out of FIFA for a while, now right back in it again. And how sweet it would be to start off the season with a trophy, even if it is in a tournament, like a friendly tournament. Don't care, I want it. We go up against Hoffenheim, who to be fair aren't exactly going to be pushovers and... Yes, it is ultimate difficulty. Any team I play on ultimate difficulty won't be pushovers, but this is a Champions League team, let's remember. I guess after these 90 minutes, we'll have found out if I've made an awful mistake by jumping in way too early to ultimate difficulty with a team like Wolves. I don't know. We'll find out. Diego Jota. That's a nice move, you know. Back to him. Can we finesse this? Maybe. Can he shoot or do anything? He didn't do anything. I went for the shot and he just did nothing. Little, little brush from the defender completely... Just, ah, uh, bottled it. Absolutely bottled it. Good. I'm going to try the cross here. Oh, that's a real deep one. And yeah, we're going to get a corner out of it. Man, I don't know what I was going for with that header. It's, uh, it's incredible how I've been going with playing career mode with Juventus. Now I'm playing with, uh, with Wolves and geez, it's a, it's a big golfing class, isn't it? It's the first! It's Adama! Oh, against Ultimate! Even though we aren't playing with the big boys of Europe anymore like Juve, even with Wolves, I'm able to take it to Ultimate Difficulty. Didn't exactly really finish this one off either. I just went on a bit of a, a run with Gian Martino, and that's, I didn't time that well at all. You can see it just pop up in the air, but it still gets past the keeper anyway. 
Yeah, it doesn't look pretty, but it is in, and it is 1-0. Come on, boys. Adama, if you had him down for my first goal scorer, then there you go. Man, it's really opening up. Wow. They are moving that ball very, very quickly. What the fuck was that? Oh, my God. Now they got the ball back. Well, sheesh. I hope Ultimate Difficulty just doesn't make my plays in absolute goddamn downs, because I have no idea what happened there. Maybe another chance still, though, with Matinho. Off to the right now. Could have a go with Neves. We'll try it. Unfortunately, straight at the keeper. Oh, God, no. Uh, how in the world? Rui Patricio, what the hell? I thought he... I thought that was way too tight an angle for him to score from. I need to see the replay. Look, the ball, it got picked off, but I didn't react in time to pass. Bolly's trying to recover, and I, I don't know what hand him in it. I still can't tell. How has this got past him? What the fuck? Oh, righto. Okay. Do we put that down to FIFA 19's keepers being shit? Or is that just an ultimate thing? D d does ultimate difficulty make my plays into idiots? That's... No, I'm just... No, come on. I can't deal with this. It's it's the first game. The first episode of the career mode. You, you've got to be kidding me. This cannot be real. It's only two minutes of stoppage time. I don't think we're going to get it. Yeah, even though I ran straight into bloody uh, a player off the ball anyway with Adama. God, I, I thought Adama's ball control would be a lot better. I can't slag him off too much. He scored my first goal, which is a big, big deal on Ultimate. But now I'm conceding shockers. Like, we, we let him get in behind my defense. All right, sweet. I, I could have maybe reacted a little quicker, but still, it happened all so fast. But the, the keeper was just... I'm, it's going to take me a long time to get over that. If that shit keeps happening, we have a fucking problem. I thought Rui Patricio was going to be my uh, my main my main goalkeeper for uh, at least the first season or two, and she goes and does stuff like that. I just I don't know. They played enough side trap there, and I think maybe we could be able to take advantage here. Maybe no, he didn't pass when I fucking told him to. No, again, not the player I'm going to. This is actually killing me right now, and you're not great save, Patricio. I thought that was it. I thought that was two one. Man, some things are happening that uh, I am not on the I'm not on the wavelength. Play it, but just no passing, seeming a little bit off, and positioning, and thankfully the goalkeeper, which is another issue that I've had so far. At least he saved me that time. Oh, nearly picked that off. Look at, oh, it's hit the crossbar. Thank the Lord. Just so much space up the middle. What is going on with my plays off the ball? I can't be dragging out this many players at once. I just I, I can't believe it. And then the deflection, Johnny, they're going to get it out, are we? Just about, I think I think we're good here. We could be. Over the top. Nice one for Adama to run onto. His pace is brilliant. It's beautiful. The fake shot. The layoff. The strike! Saved by Bowman. And I don't get to the ball first. Oh, we should have done better. And in the middle, I want to try shooting from downtown. But at the same time, I... Would rather keep it on the deck if I can. Oh my god! Every fucking time I look like I'm about to score, I, I pull off or one of my players has a shit pass that's put behind the player and it completely kills the attack. All the fucking time. Man passing in this game is going to take a long time to get used to. Or am I just going to have to fucking put up with it? I don't know. I'm not sure about that pass either. Thankfully we get it out. And yeah, we're away again. Come on. Come on. we got to keep it on the deck. We've got to do it. Nice and quick. They're bunched up up the middle. Give it out wider again. Adama's not going anywhere. What, my fullback's running hard? Jesus. Low cross maybe here. Not again where I wanted it to go. Oh, I'm trying to figure it out. Can I just hit this maybe? No, I just, I just, god damn it. Their yeah, five at the back's always there. Always set. I just can't seem to get in behind them. Good. Adama, go. I'm begging you. Oh, this could be huge. He is away here, but I, I don't trust him to get away from the defense. And he's not either. Slip in. No! Oh my fucking god, again! Again, it didn't go to the right player! You're kidding me! I have a real fucking big problem with passing in FIFA 19 this year. You are killing me! What was the game that I played in Berlin? It is not the same as the one that you have got on EA Access. Oh! Man, again, I'm going for it. I am really racking up chances. Racking up opportunities to score, and if that was the goal that went in, that would have been something, but it's just, oh, I don't know. I don't know. This It feels so much different to what I was playing in Berlin. I am about to make a bunch of changes as well. I know there's not an awful lot of time left, but this thing looks as though it could very well go to stoppage time, so I've made like four or five changes. I'm throwing almost my entire bench out there for this. Oh, 
Can we get this ball back, please? Thank you very much. Around the outside. Can we do it here, Costa? I don't trust him to get by, but nice. Into the middle here. Come on, up the middle. Oh, referee! Yeah, I just, this game's pissing me off. It's the first game of the career mode. I'm already pissed off. Oh, the passing shits me off. I should have won this game. It should be 1-0. We should not have conceded that goal. Rui Patricio's marking was fucking garbage. The passing in this game has been fucking atrocious as well and has definitely cost me a goal or two. And that counter-attack right toward the end. Does this mean penalties or extra time? It's penalties. All right, sweet, nice. I thought we were going to get extra time. Don't know why. Oh, great. If I go down on penalties after all that, I, I, do not, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. Come on, my son. He's going to go left. He's going for the chip. Oh my god, on the first one. Okay. Cavaliero is the first to step up. Oh, that's a banging penalty. Perfectly placed. Camera went off there for a little second. Sorry about that. Is he going to go left? And a save from Patricio! Oh, he's made two out of two. You beauty. Now for Helder Costa. Costa. Oh, save. That was actually a really good penalty too. God damn it. All right, they've got one. Can he make three? I, I, I sense a chip here. Straight up the middle. No, to the left. Oh, maybe the stutter got me. Now for Diego Jota. Oh, I don't fucking believe it. Oh, please, Patricio, bail me out here, son. I need you. Oh, that's an amazing penalty. We've gone the right way. Oh. Come on, Neves. Oh, for fuck's sake. You're kidding me. Now we need to make the save. Here we go. I put one shot wide. I made two saves to start. How am I actually going to bottle this? Oh, he's not going to bottle it! Rui Patricio! Ah ha ha! We should not be having to deal with this fucking penalty shootout. We should have just won it 1-0. We never should have conceded that goal. Am I going to learn my lesson? Am I? For God sake. That is about... As close as you can get to scoring without it going in. I'd already missed one today, and I, fuck, I missed two penalties today. Jesus Christ. I felt like every single time I went, the keeper went the way I went anyway, so I was like, I have to find that side netting, just like the last one I conceded. God damn it. All right. Nah, fuck's sake. God damn it, why do we have to watch these fucking pricks lifted up now? And I tell you what, we made three saves with Rui Patricio, but he's not getting off. He made it a, he had an amazing performance in the penalty shootout, but it's a fucking penalty shootout we never should have had. That goal that we conceded was such fucking bullshit. What was the marking on that? And even then, it was basically straight to you when you still couldn't do anything about it. I am fucking still so, I'm so upset at Rui Patricio. I don't care that he nearly bailed us out of the fucking penalty shootout. I'm still furious. If that happens again, I'm legitimately going to have actual proper concerns. One time, all right, fine. But twice, then you've got a big fucking problem with me. Okay, so they won 2-1 on penalty. They won 2-1 on penalties. My God, what a shootout. <laughs> they, I only scored one penalty. So I, so I had two saved and I missed two. Oh my god, what a penalty shootout, oh my god. But look, I reckon I'll advance to the the end of the month, to the 1st of August, we'll leave it there. We will have the first Premier League game to play in the next episode, and I'll also start bringing in quite a fair few signings in this first window. We'll start off with a couple of like high 70 rated players, and then maybe a few others as well, and man, I am literally, every single player I've got transfer listed, I'm getting offers for within a couple of weeks. It's amazing. And stopping things here with the first of the month, we'll end this episode with a quick look at the monthly scouting updates. Remembering we sent them away to England, France, and I believe, of course, Portugal, since we are doing this with uh, the one and only Wolverhampton Wanderers. But unfortunately, for the first time, for the first time, I have to point it out, transfer talks have broken down. This is only the first time it's happened. We've done a lot of transfers selling Deadwood players at the club. This is only the first time it's happened. So a slight improvement on the ratio of transfer deals breaking down and actually going through. But let's see who we've got to start off. We've got Joaquim Mag Magellan, or Magellan, whatever. Either way, and Izaquedo as well. Nice potential, goalkeeper. It's an okay value, we'll sign him. And then who else? We've got Joaquim as well. Nice value, whatever. We'll just to get things started, bring them in. The Italian scout in Portugal has done okay to start. And now we take a look at in France. Not seeing an awful lot of, uh, oh my goodness, this was probably the best bloke that we found. I mean, this bloke's got a nice overall, but his potential is whack. 
and Rousset is like 82 with a horrible value match potential 82. That's not a good start. And then in England, oh, we might have two here. We've got a nice high potential play there with Charles Alexander. Nicholas Morris, nice overall. Potential isn't great, but the value's okay. Isaac King, though. Isaac King. This is the man. Six foot seven goalkeeper, Isaac King. Oh, boy, with a 92 potential. Hell yeah. He's already the star of my youth academy. So, ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for this episode. The first episode of the Wolves career mode in FIFA 19. Thank you once again so much for watching. I reckon um, this is going to end up being quite a challenging career mode for me. Every game on ultimate difficulty. Still salty that we didn't win that final. I bloody should have. Forget about the penalty shootout. I never should have conceded that goal. Rui Patricio, you have to win me back, son. But that will do it. Episode 2 coming very, very soon. Don't you worry. We will play the first game of the Premier League and, of course, start making some big, big signings to get this career mode really ticking. But until then, my name is Masterbucks. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a good one.